Hello and good evening, and welcome to another episode of Faithful Moments. I'm your host, Dr. Shimon Rimmer, and I'm super excited to be with you all on this evening. So I want you all to take a few minutes and tag, share, invite someone to come along because we have an awesome topic on tonight that we are going to talk about. We are going to talk about, believe it or not, the benefits of being outcast and blackballed. How about that? <laughs> so for those of you that are joining us for the very first time, again, I am your host, Dr. Shimon Lindley, and I am the founder and CEO of Shakira Name Jewelry Collection, as well as the Success Strategies Institute. Just to share a little bit about Faithful Moments, Faithful Moments is a faith-based talk show that is inspired to empower, teach, and equip its listeners with the Word of God, more so bringing the Word of God to action, understanding that the Word of God is power, and you need to walk in power. So we're going to go ahead and get started on our topic today. I'm just going to share with you, I pulled up the definition of outcast in black ball. Just a little breakdown. Okay, so what is outcast? Outcast is a term that has been used to refer to individuals who have been marginalized or rejected by their community for various reasons. It can be due to the difference in uh, appearance, beliefs, or actions. Okay. Um, and so what we're going to do, we're going to talk about um, outcasts, and we're going to examine um, the emotions and how they take a toll on the individual, but I'm also going to share how a person can bounce back. Now, black ball, on the other hand, refers to exclusion from a particular group, organization, or industry due to disapproval or allegations. So um, with that being said, individuals who are black law can sometimes um, be or, let's say it like this, receive um, negative impact as it relates to their careers, their personal lives, and in their circles. So I just wanted to do a quick definition of that. And so and what I'm going to do is just share a little bit. Mm -hmm. I'm going to share a little bit about, um, again, I shared a little clip earlier today. And I talked about how um, I had watched a particular creator, which, um, and actually that person is Marcus Rogers, and he was sharing how he had basically been, basically was out, it, and I believe it was because of, um, I'm going to say, it's probably his approach on how he um, speaks out on sort of certain topics, and um, also whether true, indifferent, or, you know, maybe they don't like how he presents it or says it, um, his friends had a choice to decide whether or not they wanted to still be in relation with him or did they, did they need to separate from him. And so what he learned was that some of the individuals that he was associated with was still his friend, friends with plural S, um, basically like on the down low, but they could never do business with him in person or let it be known that, um, let it be known about their association. So in essence, um, He's somewhat, he was somewhat of an outcast. And so when he was sharing his story, I was sharing how that's so relatable in everyday living. 
right? So some of us may not experience it on that magnitude, um, but in some shape, form, or fashion, you have dealt with rejection and you've been excluded. And so um, I shared with someone how God can give you confirmation um, of the things that you pray about. When you pray, God will give you revelation. So God says, yes, you have been excluded. Some circles have excluded you because of their choice. But some cir circles you have been excluded because of me. Come on. Uh, okay. Because of, because of me. Isn't that interesting? So, um, but I'm here to tell you, I want to share with um, individuals to stay encouraged and to stay faithful to yourself, regardless of what is going on behind, around you or, you know, in your everyday life. Because the word of God says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all things, all things will be added unto you. So you don't have to go out searching, looking, trying to fit in, trying to make things work out for you. Sit in your place of isolation and deal with you. And so I don't want to get ahead of myself um, because I'm going to come back to what are some of the positive impacts. But first, I want to deal with the negative impacts. So because we know that those two words are negative, right? So number one, number one um, negative impact, professional consequences of being blackballed, serious damage to a person's professional career, making it difficult for employment, securing contracts, um, and gathering with others, whether it be in their industry or, or their circle. Number two, social isolation. It can lead to social isolation. That's the example that I was using with you guys. Um, as you may be excluded from social events, invitations, invites, speaking engagements, networking opportunities, or professional circles. Number three, mental health. There's a stigma and isolation associated with blackballing that has a significant impact on a person that could have a significant impact on a person's, person's mental health, creating anxiety or depression. So thing number four, financial losses, loss of job, loss of job opportunities, business connections as a result, creating financial hardship. And thing number five, personal stress. Dealing with negative consequences of being blackballed can be emotionally stressful. And actually, it can um, affect one's health, physical health, as well as their quality of life. So it is important to ad address the situation and seek support in migrating these impacts and work around rebuilding your connections. So sometimes... God will keep you in that place until he feels that you have reached a level of maturity. And sometimes this is all in place to help you discover who you are. I always like to say, you need to understand who you are in Christ, who God says that you are. You have the ability to be an overcomer. Amen. So now I'm going to hop over here to our positives. I'm going to hop over here to our positives. And what are some of our positive impacts? Just the part I love. Just the part I love. Just the part I love. Positive impacts. Positive impacts. There are potentially positive impacts or benefits um, outcoming to these particular circumstances. Okay, number one, personal growth. Being blackballed can lead to self-reflection and personal growth as individuals may reassess their actions and their values. So don't look at it as a negative. Take the time to re reflect on you. And then you know what? Try to, 
trying to figure out what are those things about you that um, that cause you to be isolated or not excluded. And sometimes it's just one simple word or words, jealousy and envy. Or it can be another word, control. When you're not controllable, people tend to not include you. So know your value, know your worth, hold down your standards and don't compromise. So that's the positive outcome of being outcast. Personal growth and self-reflection. So that's number one. Number two, new opportunities. New opportunities. So um, during your time and your period, guess what? You can seek out new, new opportunities, new avenues, new, um, uh, new talents, new skill set. Go in another direction. Find a new door. Um, start new connections, new opportunities. It'll push you to explore other paths, right? So number three is independence. Independence. Being excluded can encourage self-reliance, causing you to not depend on others. It can encourage entrepreneurship, driving individuality to cre create your own um, ventures or businesses. Okay, so that's number three. Number four, stronger connections. Stronger connections. I think you'll do a better job at vetting people that you connect with, people that you associate with, people who you can trust, people with integrity, people with character, people with like uh, goals and ambitions, people that truly desire to help others build and are not threatened by their existence. So stronger connections, it can help individuals strengthen bonds with those who support them during their difficult times and lead to more meaningful, meaningful, y'all catch that word, meaningful, meaningful relationship, not what you can do, what you can bring to the table of being used, but meaningful relationships that work both ways. And number five, advocacy. Advocacy. Um, advocacy. Advocate for change using your experience to raise awareness about issues or circumstances that may have led you to be excluded, like this video. Number six, improved reputation. Over time, with personal growth and positive contributions, individuals may overcome their past blackballing by regaining a positive reputation. So now, with all that being said, it is a Potential to note that guess what? There is potential to turn these situations and circumstances around to work for your benefit. Amen. Amen. Now, so when I was doing all that research, you know, I always want to look in the scripture. I'm like, okay, so what scriptures? can back up this topic. Like, you know, what were some, some scenarios? Good, bad, indifferent. So I want to share with you um, what I found. So I'm just going to do a few, um, just name like two or three. But there's one that truly stood out that I want to, to dive deeper into. So number one, one um, scripture or story in the Bible is the story of Cain. Cain being the son of, of um, the son of Abe uh, and Eve, right? Was cast out by God 
after he killed his brother Abel. His story served as a warning about the consequences of jealousy and sin. So that was one illustration of outcast. Uh, another one I'm gonna talk over here. Um, I'm gonna leave that one for last. I'm gonna go here. The story of Job. And we know that um, Job suffered and he was outcast by his friends and his community. Despite his hardship, he remained faithful to God and his story emphasized endurance. So he did not curse God. He did not complain. He was outcast. And guess what? Y'all know the story. God gave him increases because he endured. And last but not least, I say this was the last because I wanted to go a little deep on this one. The story of Hagar. So we know that Hagar was an Egyptian uh, maid servant, right? And was cast out <laughs> with her son. And so we got, uh, um, you know, her son, and um, she was a maid servant for Sarah, right? And so the bottom line was God intervened to save them. And so Hagar's story talks about endurance and divine care. And so when I, um, when I noted that one down, I wanted to go a little deeper in this one. Let me see if I can find it. Sorry about that. Back a little bit here. Excuse me. I hope you guys are finding this um, motivating. Makes you think a little differently. I'm always going to bring you challenging topics so that we can talk about and how you're going to turn negative into positive. Everything is not always peaches and cream. Um, when we're teaching and sharing the word of God. And I think that there needs to be more transparent moments um, and people sharing honesty about the things that they go through as ministers, men and women of God, and um, being able to show as an overcomer, what did you do? What did you do during the time of difficult, when it was difficult and um, trouble? You can't just tell somebody, you know, keep praying, keep fasting, you know, hang in there and listen. They, but you want to know, you know, what's the end result, you know, I, because I keep saying that the things on the dark side is seeing me as if things are working better and quicker than us as believers. And so do we make people feel that, um, our walk, our faith, our our religion, I don't like to use the word religion, but our belief system that God doesn't show up for us, you know, it may not be in our timing, it may not be in our season, but guess what? God does show up. And so being faithful and enduring, we have to begin to show people the other side. And so I always say this, are you as a minister, as a believer, Producing fruit. Where where's your fruit? What are you what are you sharing? What are you know what are you what are you putting out there other than just motivating us? You know, people want to believe that the word of God is what it says and does what it says that it will do. Amen. Hi, good in yourself. Feeling good, it was good. Just glad that it finally pulled off. Okay. Yeah. Those must be your children. Those are my grandkids. Okay, I don't think it's <laughs> oh, oh, Yes. Uh huh. <laughs> you yes. Your children? Thank you. How old are they? How old are you guys? Oh, he's really Oh, she. Seven and six. Oh, what are they? 
and you're yes. from our audience, Michaela, by the way. Michaela, hi. Okay, I'm Shimona. Shimona. Yes. What you getting done today? I'm doing service okay. um, on my tire. Okay. I have a nail in my tire. Okay, what do you Um, It is a 2018 Range Rover. Oh, no, I just got it. Okay, you just got it. Okay. <laughs> yes. She look, she want to give me a new car, y'all. Y'all better come over and see Michaela. I surely want to. <laughs> yes, my name is Michaela. Yeah, because we're doing all types of, uh, we got all types of trading in this, you know, for customers that are trying to do, do their trades, you know, mm -hmm. signing up a check, taking their equity, while we dollars, we're giving them a discount, all that stuff, we're giving them the rest of our prices. So. Okay, so y'all hear that. Come over and see Miss Michaela. I'll give you some business cards, so just in case you're not, I'm just catching up somebody else who's in the market. I'm going to give you some business cards, okay? Thank you. Okay, thank you. All right. Okay, you guys. All right. So let's get back to business. I'm sorry, y'all. So y'all know I'm over here getting my service done, so I want to make sure that we don't miss our meeting tonight here on Faithful Moments. And so now let's go here. I told you I wanted to share this one. Okay. Oh, where is it? Where is it? Where? Okay. Here it is. So these were powerful lessons um, that I took away from Hagar's story. As a quick little backdrop. What we have about nine more minutes, so I believe we can get it in. So who was Hagar? So I'm just gonna read this little, quick little, I'm gonna call it bio. Hagar was a lonely, abused single woman and a slave girl who encounters God so intimately, right? So Hagar was Sarah's slave and the mother of Abraham's first son because Sarah could not conceive. Although she experienced torment and abuse from her mistress and her circumstances, God is faithful to her and blesses her despite it all. Gotcha. I'll come over and see you. I'm gonna come over and see you. Okay, thank you. All right. So Hagar is a woman who experiences God's goodness firsthand and trusts him fully. We can learn, okay, we can learn so much from her boldness and the blessings God provides her throughout her entire life. So I'm um, going to go here to Genesis, go to Genesis, Genesis 16. Now, Sarah, Abe's wife, had bore him no children, but she had a had an Egyptian slave named Hagar. So she said to Abram, the Lord has kept me from having children. Go sleep with my slave. Perhaps I can build a family through her. Hagar had no choice in this matter, but she does become pregnant. Now, I'm just going to sit down here a little bit. Um, and maybe it was because she resents the situation that Sarah had forced her into. Um, or because she knew that she had more social clout now that she was pregnant with Abram's baby, Abraham's baby. But Hagar became, uh, Hagar began treating Sarah with contempt. So Sarah retaliated by treating Hagar so harshly that Hagar fled to the desert. But God saw the whole thing and had com had compassion on Hagar. So, as we see, um, Hagar became an outcast, right? When she was in the desert, behold, a, a spring of water, the angel of the Lord appears to her and talks to her. She tells him, she tells him that she is running away from her mistress, to which he replies, Go back to your mistress and submit to her. The angel added, 
I will increase your descendants so much that they will they will be too numerous to count. You are now pregnant and you will give birth to a son. You shall name him Ishmael. For the Lord has heard your misery. The Lord has heard your misery. The Lord has heard and watched how they have treated you. He will be he will be a wild donkey of a man. Although returning to her mistress was probably the last thing that Hagar wanted to do and the last thing she wanted to hear as a command from the Lord. She does not fight it. She does not fight it. She knows that something spectacular has just happened to her. And she has great faith. Uh, look at that word, faith. She has great faith. She gives this name. Gives this. I'm sorry. She gave this name to the Lord who spoke to her. You are the, you are the God who sees me. For she said, I have, I have now seen the one who sees me. And that's in Genesis 16, verse 13. So Hagar returns to her mistress and bears Abraham's son. And guess what? Of course, we know she names him Ishmael. So I'm going to try to fast forward this a little bit. Um, we see Hagar uh, in Genesis 21. Um, Isaac has been, I'm sorry, Isaac has been born to Abraham and Abraham prepares a huge feast to celebrate Isaac being born. But when Sarah saw that Ishmael was either mocking or playing with Isaac, guess what? Sarah became afraid that Ishmael would, turn, would take Isaac's inheritance. So she demands that Abraham get rid of Hagar and Ishmael. There's the outcast. There's the outcast. But I want you to know, God told her to return, told Hagar to return when, um, when she decided to run away. But she stood on the word and she endured. She endured. So God reconfirms his promise to Hagar that Ishmael is going to be the father of a great nation. He remains faithful to, the, to them. And Hagar even arranges for Ishmael to marry a woman from out of Egypt. God remains so faithful to Hagar throughout her entire life. She, deserve, she deserves credit for trusting him to do so. So now I say to you, when you have been outcast, you heard the word of the Lord. And God says, He's your Jehovah Jireh. He's your provider. He said, you shall be the head and not the tail. Are you going to stand on those words? Or are you going to let what you're experiencing? Are you going to let your emotions, are you going to let your feelings dictate and get you out of position for what God has said that he will bless you with? I don't care what it looks like. I don't care if you don't have anything in your hands. I don't care... If you don't have anyone supporting you, stand on the word of God and see his salvation. I am so excited for what God is doing in my life and in the believer's life, your life, and other uh, of my friends' lives. And that's one thing that we all have to do. We have to be in a place of celebrating, you have to learn to celebrate other people's success, whether you like how they do it, whether you there's something about them that you don't like. But guess what? You don't have the right to outcast anyone. But if you choose and decide to understand that you're only setting them up for their blessing. So I want to thank you on today for joining me because this message has truly blessed me and a couple of people that I shared it with prior to me um, sharing it with you all. I hope there were some takeaways and I look forward to your feedback. You can always message me directly. You can message me in the uh, comments or however, reach out, 
but I can't wait to hear your thoughts and your opinions on how to turn a situation of being blackballed or outcast into a positive situation for you. Stand on the word of God. I am Dr. Shimona Wembley, and I look forward to seeing you on next week. Have a blessed day.